opportunity to uh, appear tonight in front of the board to continue to discuss the project. Um, I think we're close. We really, obviously wanted the opportunity to um, discuss any remaining issues and just, I think, point out certain things that we just want to make sure that uh, the board was aware of from our submission. So um, I think first and foremost, you know, we, we, we think we addressed the uh, the comment relating from during the public hearing relating to the screening. Um, we, obviously, we took that comment seriously. Uh, we reviewed it with uh, my client and Keplinger Freeman, who obviously you know was in the business of uh, you know landscape design. So they they reviewed what the <clears throat> concern and comment was and came up with a proposed planning and screening plan that we think addresses the concern that was raised at the public hearing. Okay, and before we go on, go that, um, I, I was able to reach out to the neighbors yep. that are at the address that you're, you're addressing. Um, and so they're here tonight too, because we had advised that, you know, a quick discussion with them, just mm -hmm. to make sure um, mm -hmm. that that's something, especially the trees that would be right adjacent to their property line, Yeah. Um, that that was something that would work for them, just in case they, didn't want to be screened. They wanted to keep right. Yeah, I mean, like that. So they right. are here online. Um, yeah, well, Scott, just to let them show them real quick here. Well, sure. And you know, yeah, we have our two board members. Yeah, we have members. Yeah. So we wouldn't mind seeing what you're doing. Yeah, wouldn't mind my coming up here. I, I have my do it last time. Yeah. Yeah. Let me stop for a minute. Is this different from the submission? No, no absolutely no. It's identical. exactly the same. Identical. Okay. Yes. Right. I know what you're. Yeah, that's not good. We're not doing that. <laughs> Do it. You taught me. <laughs> so this is the existing conditions plan. I'll show everybody that you guys know what that looks like. These are the existing arborvitae. There, there. The plans are big enough to show the residents, but. <laughs> We were going with six uh, six foot height evergreens to, to go in kind of what's there now. So there's all kinds of different plant materials. Is there, are you in agreement with that? Or would you like to Is see that something? the same kind of, they're already like the same? Yeah, they're going to be like the ones that are there are probably a little taller. Yeah, they, they probably grow like about a foot, a foot a year. And you don't, you don't plant them like right next to each other. One would be here, one would be here. You know, six, four would be like right about there. And four or five years they'll start to they'll start to fill in. And, and the design intent um Actually, was, it's not the same as what's shown. It is not the plant they show. There's two gaps shown there that you're filling in. Only one of them is shown filled in on the this was submitted this is February 28, 2024. Yeah but it's not I've got it up I pulled it up on off the website because we didn't get these drawings in paper copies. 
we got a notice in our email that we will get them out of the town. I don't look at those. <laughs> Can you go back to that drawing? Because it was right on. Yeah, that's the same one that I got. Yeah, we just the one that's. I think it's the same one, but I'll go with it. It's not the same one. Okay, we'll go off the screen. It might not be a big difference, but it's that corner. Are you on the elephant? Are you on the elephant? Right, that's what I was pointing to right there. Yeah. Hold on just a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. So on the one you've got. So this is this is the digital version of what I showed you. I think it might show that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's showing the same. Yeah, I showed it. It's on several different plans. But anyway, are you so six foot arbor ready? But that's all we. Yeah, the, the the one the one thing from our perspective is we have a uh, yeah. garden right there that grows oh, along that fence, so okay. we don't we don't necessarily want the trees. Right. Oh, I, I know what you're saying. We could we could offset them. What I would recommend is moving them maybe at least five or six feet so we can get them more behind. Yeah, I yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, they're still on. They're still on. So still on so the property. property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Property yeah. line. I would yeah, put it here. Yeah. So Michael could get a, a more behind it. I wouldn't yeah, want to. Right. Yeah, I don't want to over mulch it and have yeah. it too wide. I want to show them the other ones by the garage that are meant to address. Yeah, them. you don't mind scrolling that down. So really, the design is that they catch the headlights. Yeah, the vehicle at five o'clock. The headlights are going to be here. You know, per my discussion with Aaron a month ago, we didn't want to just create a, a wall of plants everywhere. We wanted to where the headlights are going. So the headlights hit these evergreens, and then there's a gap where we did your house. Now we're shutting that gap. In the other place, we added some wider greens was over there because when you're leaving, like when those parking spaces turn their spaces on, they'll be those are, yeah, those are those yeah. are Norway spruce, which are a little wider again, and they're going to be six feet high. Six feet tall, they grow about yeah. 12, 18 inches a year, and we're actually going to take uh, some of the asphalt from on site and build it up on a little berm, put some topsoil on it, so the trees themselves will be six feet. But they'll be on the prior around eight, eight or nine feet, a little burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hate to interrupt. This is the planning board that makes oh. the decisions. Okay. Homeowners don't make this. Talk to us, please. Okay. The three evergreens next to the garage. The design intent was when people in the parking lot or those parking spaces, they turn on their headlights, it'll hit those evergreens. They're three six foot Norway spruce that grow. Well, please don't. Put them on top of a buried pile of asphalt. Okay, it's all topsoil. There's, there's no. Not be topsoil, but we do it all the time. I'm not going to argue with you. What we're, it's what we do is we put it in the lower level, and there's soil. There's two foot of soil on top of some of the spots. If you want to know that the asphalt's leaving, we'll do that. Let's not get hung up on that. It'll be evergreens, you know, Christmas trees. They're they're more pyramidal. It'll be six foot high, three of them. On top of some topsoil. Mm. That's the planting that we yeah, had. Yeah, I just want to read the ones that were closest to their. Yeah, I just, I just, we're, 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 we're good with the proposed. The five feet back. Five feet back from our property. Okay. Okay. So, the so, 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 there's the group along the fence, and then there's three that might be. closer to the scale arc on the drawing. No, those are there. We have two sets of the That's already what's there. No, those are existing. Okay. Yeah. Along the fence on the drawing L2.0, I think there's 12 orange circle items. And that's item number 11 in the layout construction note, which says there's 12. The ten are showing, and so the either side of those, a whole series of faint circles. What are those? Those are the existing ones. So you're filling in between yes. existing ones. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So is it ten or twelve? I guess we're going to make it twelve. Okay. This way, there'll be some overlap. Okay. <laughs> so, so you write that down. Yeah. Like, yeah. Five foot. Twelve. Six foot. Six foot. <laughs> six foot five feet back from the property. Five foot up the Gotcha. Well, no topsoil spill. No asphalt barrier. Okay. Would you ask the lingeries if uh, deer are normally present? Yeah, we don't we don't get any deer yeah. on our property. Well, we we well, get deer, they usually hang out in that board. No, they, they do like our variety, the, okay. the green 
giant or Aaron will attest to this, they're, they're less likely to be this is a secondary type of event. Can I still ask him? Sure. Could that be considered if like because they're on uh, the power property, if they're highly impacted, I think someone mentioned this that Deer love them or whatever. Is that something that Batars are responsible for, or if we feel like there's an issue? Can we go straight to Batar and we have to come back to planning? Well, with, now? no, I mean, if they're on like if they're on the Batar property, they're his responsibility. And yeah, I mean, I would encourage you to have, you know, Michael, you know, Michael then wants to yeah. put a lot of time, effort, money yeah. into making this look good. But what a landscaper would do, you know, Michael's not going to be out there. Yeah. Be, he's going to be doing a lawyer does. These, they would wrap them in burlap. No, that's okay. I think that that was really good discussion. So, okay. so it seems like we uh, addressed that comment. Um, we did remove that building sign from the building, so that's just not part of the yeah, package anymore. Um, I think the, the last issue really is the signage that we're proposing at, at the property. Um, if you recall from the Sure. Wait, sir, can I go for some low hanging fruit? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, like the, the details that um, on, on the gate um, that said, I think there were a couple things. Details on the gate, um, the lighting specs. Oh, you're on the, the checklist. I, I, was just, well, I was just trying to, like, for like the signs are the hard part. I just yeah. wanted to get to okay. the low hanging fruit. Yeah, problem. sure. So, which one do you do Well, you I, I guess I, I, I was looking at order. Yes. Let's start that's at the nice. gate. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, let's start at the gate. gate. The gate has a picture, but yet I've heard you're not going to do the gate. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Plants. I was going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> Take off plants. So, the, gate, so, the gate's just going to come off. Okay. We heard the comments, and in talking to the client, they've decided to just remove the gate from the plant. Okay. So, I think that addresses that comment. And then okay. the, the two the, the uh, sign on the building and the yes. monument sign that has an X in it. Yes. So that was meant to those, indicate that those were just coming off. So we were just trying to show that they were coming yeah. off with the X. Then the, the sign on the building is, is and it's in the narrative, mm -hmm. but the sign on the building's off. I the, don't care what's in there. Take it off the plants. Okay, we'll take it off the plants. Mm -hmm. Um and the one monument sign at the entrance, we are proposing to remove and replace with the two smaller directional signs that would frame the driveway. Um, we think that that's a good compromise. Um, they meet the code requirement for each four square feet. They're gonna sit on brick bases and the brick is gonna match the brick on the house. That's important to Mike to have that consistency between the, the signage. Um, and we thought that that was a good compromise. We know at the earlier meetings, there was discussion about um, wanting those to be more directional in nature. So we think they're nice. They're going to frame the driveway. Um, they're going to ensure that people traveling to the office can find the entrance, whether they're coming east or west. And that will help avoid any um, unnecessary turnarounds on Draycott or, or elsewhere if they miss the property. The other reason we, we really do want the two directional signs is because you know, we are pulling those signs, obviously, out of the DOT right away. They're going to be more set back. Um, perhaps not as visible as some of the other signs along Genesee Street that are somehow in the right of way. Um, so that was another basis for why we thought having the two directional signs um, would be appropriate. So I, I, obviously we did see the comment from the board from the workshop meeting um, indicating the preference for one directional sign, but in talking to the client, he, he does want, did want me to reiterate the request for the two signs and, and the basis for why we why we think those okay. are appropriate. Yeah, I think if, if the gate is being removed, it might make more sense now for okay. the two directional signs. Then okay. there's one that just to even it out and kind of give that impression of an entrance. Yeah. Um, but I I did want to have the board discuss the directional signs. And, the number of them and what's on them. So if you well, driving that right. road at evening, unless it's really well lit and trying to find a certain driveway, it could be problematic. I think it's a very good idea to frame your driveway on a directional sign on either side. Okay, so great. Particularly with a proximity to thrive. Right. We want to really unfamiliar with the area, it can be 
disconcerting to be on that road at that level. Yeah, and that was one of the I think reasons for it was kind of the early concerns that were expressed about you know people inadvertently turning on the Drake high. We want to avoid that. We want them coming to the office. So well, plus they speak down that road too, you know, so at least they have an idea for the signs. Right. Yeah. That was the thought. Yeah. And and also if you guys have taken a look at the I'm looking at the directional signs, directional one and two plans. Um what we think as far as what should be on them, the, the name of the law firm, the address, enter, right. the are they going to be lit? They're going to be LED illuminated, so. yes. From the ground up? No, within the sign, backlit. backlit. So with the sign, I guess, I, I certainly, I still think one is adequate. Um, I think that sometimes the more signage you introduce, it dilutes its impact. Um, there's a lot of signs already going on here. I'm not, I think that it can be kind of distracting to see more than one personally. Um, but what seems to be, um, more important to me, to me for people who know where they're going is one thing, right? People who've never been are also looking for the number. And I think that it would be important to have both sides of the sign be the same thing if you were to have one sign. And on the sign drawings that were submitted, a bunch of the line work is missing. So I don't know, if it, I don't think it's just the way it's showing up on my computer screen or not, but um, a lot of the line work is missing. So we can't actually see the outlines of the sign, but there might be a way to put the enter and the number on the same sign. And if you had one, it would have the same information on both sides because otherwise your eye is looking like, okay, here's the number, here's the name. Like it can be a little bit confusing when there's a lot going on. Um, and you might not need to have the complex injury insurance product. Like you could make it a little, it is just an entry sign. It's not the business advertising sign, which is, you know, previously, you know, for those people that are going to use. Um, we would want to see, I would want to see the full design of those signs, not just the graphic. Um, and with the lighting, you know, this kind of goes to all the signs. There was a bunch of discrepancies on the sign details. Um, is it where are we going to uh, Well, the foundations, I mean, but the brick size, the total height, the cap material, is it um, going to be the blue stone? Is it going to be flash? The flashing is the length of several bricks. Um, on one of the details, there was something like hanging out on the left, the sheet, and I wasn't sure what it was. But I, I can answer that. Unfortunately, they're not complete because we felt like this conversation wasn't complete. Once this conversation is complete, we don't, we don't have a problem final detailing. We did have a couple of notes on there. It could be flashed. The Alexander sign is actual next to Dunkin' Donuts right off Colorado Road. And it does have the flashing on the side. It looks quite nice. And it is three bricks down. And the other, so that's option one. The other option is with the bluestone coating. I'm not sure. Michael had a discussion with the sign manufacturer that they, they had a, they agreed to disagree. They, they didn't have a final direction on it, but what Michael wanted to know is what kind of sign can he get there? So, so we appreciate the feedback. We'll clean it up. I think now we're down to text and we will, we will come back with. I'm well, no, well, I think the other, the other question, just so everybody's on the same page, can you just explain just what I'm thinking? And seeing the, the drawing on the site plan and then our uh, graphic here that you have up. The end view, that's facing north and south, and then the text is east and west, correct? Mm -hmm. so the signs would be perpendicular, I believe. Let me just check out the site plan. The monument sign and the directional signs are different. Yeah, they're the directional right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this. This would be per so if this is the road that would be perpendicular. This would be facing the road. That when you're driving down the road at a distance, you would see you would see this and this. That's perpendicular to the road. So that's going east and west along the right. five yep. and then the capture yep. right and, and I know Aaron, you prefer one sign. I'm, I'm just this is like what my client said to me. 
it's a busy road and I drove into that driveway at night to see what the light impacts would be on the neighbors. I went there actually one day when there was snow two months ago and there was snow in the front. And if, if it's not plowed, you can't, you don't know where to go. And I guess Michael's point was having two signs kind of gives you a target. I understand what you're saying about having too much on the signs, but if we thinned out the text on the sign, we would really like the board to consider having two signs. I don't know if that's, I'm just, that's where Michael, our client is coming from. And I just, I can one, see the argument for it. Um, I'm just, and that's, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Are we getting rid of the turnaround if you're getting rid of the gate? Yeah, the turnaround was only there because of the gate, so they're both being um, removed. Is it just a really quick question? What's OCF? It's, it's not a thing. Um, where? We, we can, I can ask you later. Yep, yep. Oh, okay. Um, you don't have to your head. <laughs> there were some sections of stuff on the ramp. That were kind of pointing the wrong way, and I think it was just the, the um, contour line labels are not. Yeah, we're, we're going to finish. Okay. So you're Again. trying to clean all that up. Yeah. Um, yes. Image sign stuff with the image press or passis, directional signage, um, cabinet colors. I drove by there today, and there's quite a few trees actually over yeah. near the entrance. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Wait, let's, let's do one. Okay, the okay. one the other. Uh, that was the sign. Okay, and the trees under the entrance and directional the sign. So let's finish the directional sign. I just wanted to kind of get a consensus from the board as far as what we're thinking one or two directional signs and what we're thinking so that they have some a direction to go. Ahead. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> so, and, what, and what's on the signs? So, I know Don's mentioned. Here in favor of two. Are two? We have two. To I want to see how they lay out on the property. Okay. And I want to see the colors. This is one of the problems. They they don't tell us what the color is going to be to be determined. Tell us now. You'll come back. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, I know you said the brick is going to match the brick of the building. Yeah. Yes. The, we know that. The sign manufacturer, Michael, went, our client went to the sign manufacturer separate from us. So, so Mike. Oh, was doing the best job he can to bring it all together. So you guys are a little frustrated because you don't have everything. And Michael, Bo, you know, our client doesn't fully understand this process. So the answers you're giving us today will, will enable us to finish it. But the last meeting, the meeting before, we didn't have enough information to finish it. So I think we're your comments are, are well taken. And we'll go to the, the sign manufacturer and say you have to match our plan and you have to pick one material it can't be flashed and blue stone and the, the text the number signs um hopefully we get two and then the, the text on the sign uh that would be nice to know what you'd be willing to give us on that and i'd like to see where they're going to be placed what you know, we're going to see from you know a direction okay we can well, right now i have no clue where these are yeah, they're marked on the drive. I mean, they're right next to the driveway. They're on the client's property. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. they're on the layout plan, and they're yeah. beyond. I want to yeah. know what I'm going to see when I drive out. I want to know what I see when I come in. When I'm driving down Route Five, I want to understand it. Okay. So I, guess, I guess you want to. You want to. Okay. I can take an existing photo and then superimpose that on it. Like that's that's what he's asking. Have okay. a plan view, a, okay. a 3D view. Yeah. We can do that. And I think, I think in my, my view, the simpler the better, you know, is, again, especially because it's providing direction. Mm -hmm. So the simpler the better. And uh, you've got the monument sign, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but also kind of thinking if you've got this, if they're directional signs, do we need the monument of the brick and then the separate sign? Or can, well, I think he wants it to, he does want to look, make it look a certain way to match the historic nature of the house. So that's important, I think, not just a post driven into the ground. He wants that nice brick base to kind of accent. I think the what sign. she was saying is, you know, like a, a sign on top, or can the sign be integral to the brick? So well, I, I don't know. Uh, to Aaron's point, you're going to have two signs one that has a number and one has a name. It's going to be confusing for everybody driving. Your point about the driveway and you're trying to make the driveway look where it is when there's snow or the way of That's a good point as well. But you don't have to put two signs. You can put one sign that has the 7478 on it in the name. And the other one 
it's just a break to match it so you can divide the driver. You don't need three signs. You can put it all on one side of the information. It doesn't confuse the image. And you've got the other break one, balance it off to show where the driver is. Is there any idea? Yeah. We'd still like yeah. two signs. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to go in too much of a circle. But well, two we... signs is, is, let's say I'm going to your law firm. I'm looking for the name and the number. Mm -hmm. I see the number. And I got to try, oh, no, wait, the name is over there. Maybe it's over on the other, the other side. That's what I'm saying. That's what's confusing. It's confusing whoever's coming to you for the first time. Well, I wonder, like, Votar Law, 778, yeah. maybe Mentor yeah. yeah. on the brick or yeah. something. The simpler the better, people are going to be driving faster than they should be through there. And like I was saying, it's not shown on the drawing. There's a lot of trees that aren't shown on here. I drove by today, and this whole area leading up to before the driveway is full of trees. So, not to mention, will you, it's how distance. will you see it? I it's, mean, a, it's quite a distance off the road. You're not on the roadway. You're right. Right. I mean, everyone else somehow got their signs in a right away, and we were pulling them back. So too we late. agree. You're just too late. You just got to. I guess so. I mean, these I'm signs are far. Like, I'm just these, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're trying to do things the right way, but we think these signs are far better than the other signs that are along Genesee Street, especially how they're lit and and where they're located. Um, so we we like. The board also gives some consideration yeah. to how this fits in with that corridor yeah, overall. We've driven up and down there back and forth multiple times, but I think, yeah, everybody else has one sign. So now we've gone essentially three. So we're. Well, this this property also has so the, you know, one has the other a lot side. more frontage than any other property on Genesee Street. Yeah, and I think but, uh, with the driveway and the issues with Draycott and turnouts, right. that's why we're open to more right. than just the no, one. Understood. But yeah. Trying to keep it still simple and not confuse, you know, not make it more confusing. You want it to actually be the help. I'm so I'm kind of thinking if you are going to have to either like what David said, where there's nothing on the second one, or it's the same. Eastbound, traffic westbound, now it's to cross two lanes mm -hmm. if they yeah. want to turn. And there's no traffic control that says that they can't. What gives them the best part of the aim to across two oncoming traffic lines? I think the sign on the other side of this driveway, particularly you think it as clear as possible, that it's distinct from Draycott Drive. Because if they miss turn on the Draycott, yeah. they're going to turn around and come back. You're a the neighbors who live on Draycott. I need to bear in mind what makes the best target framework for cars coming both directions. Particularly the ones that are westbound face this issue of trying to cross the oncoming traffic. It is a tough left turn, mm -hmm. especially during busy times. Yep. Too late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of businesses there that have the same problem. <laughs> I think it's just it could be confusing because this would be the only one having two, and that the fact that they say something different, it's more for your brain to process mm -hmm. and the time that you have to do it. That's all. I think showing taking a photograph from each side and manipulating the um, sign in there will be extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, to maybe you guys will come to a conclusion one way or another about what you really, you know, strongly feel, especially when you look at the scale of the text on the sign versus where people will be able to use that in relation to speed. Yeah. I'm hearing that I think more, the majority of us are thinking the two. But I think we are all agreeing that it needs to be clear and simplified. Okay. So if we can go with that. Yeah, I mean, if we <laughs> get a commitment and two signs to where we can spend the time and energy yeah. with CASIS to really nail down yeah. and address the comments. The and, idea of the double and get all the details. And the one sign is good. I like that. Has there been any discussions with the DOT to swap out the current? Entrance with one near the parking where the parking lot is. Not at all. We didn't even want to open the door to that. And they did comment that they weren't going to grant any different access point. And one of the responses that we received from, um, I think, the county 
So no, I mean, we don't want to go down that road. We like where it is. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about all these things with the, the monument signs, the entrance signs and so on. If you had, if you close this off and put an entrance near the parking area, we just think we're going to be with DOT for months and months and years, and we we really would prefer to leave it where it is. I really think that's just going to create more issues. I appreciate the comment. Yeah, there is one thing that you got to take a look at, and this this type of design where you have one or two. You got forty eight inches of the height of the sun. Think of yourself leaving the driveway, and now you got to take a left or a right. Does the sign block your vision of the traffic that you're trying to take? It's what it's it's back pretty I think it's back yeah. now. Yeah. Other everybody else on, on the street would have that issue, but we're far back. And these are backlit signs, it's not a, a floodlight shooting. Yeah, but it doesn't sign. make you a visual block. So, yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. setback it, it's pretty far back. So I don't know where those, excuse me, where those signs came from, but I've been doing this board for six years and mm -hmm. none of them were approved by this board. No, so, so you know, but I but I mean it's been no, a long I'm, time. They're mostly yeah. old stuff. So I'm just saying I went out yeah, there one night and the, the floodlights <laughs> from those other lights were distracting. I think that's the biggest safety concern on that road is the uplighting yeah. on those other lights. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Your eyes can't. Once you look at that bright light, you can't. Right. Un, this will be setting it. a standard for something. Yeah, not much better. better. So what we'll make your code book is a good yeah. example. <laughs> <laughs> not with that James Alexander, but yeah. right. <laughs> um, okay, so if we're, I want to just make sure we're addressing um, our comments from our engineer who is in here, but I want to make sure we've got this. So. Um, are we okay as the board not seeing the sample of brick because it's going to be similar to the existing building? Yes. So we yes. go ahead. Okay. Um, but we do want to see the mock ups and the actual um, backlighting and, and the materials and the colors. Um, okay. I think we're okay with directional signs. We can move to the monument sign. Okay. And Aaron, we have to move to the monument sign. Just the detailing. I mean, I think that it sounds like they're yeah. kind of working out some stuff and showing what they could um, with the information that they've yeah. added. Yeah. I think the full, just, you know, maybe replace the stuff you're axing off the sheet with yeah. the same details for the directional okay. signs, flush yeah. out the details. Okay, absolutely. Fix up all the weird little things that aren't right, and then um, footings and all that. And I think. You know the usual stuff like materials, colors, lighting, yeah. all of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any yeah. further questions on. Okay. 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 And the other thing is the lighting plan. Same idea. Put it in the. Yeah, the lighting. We were a little confused by that comment. I wasn't sure what that was referring to because we're not changing any of the actual exterior lights on the site where you're just talking about with respect to the signage. I think it's because Doug had said this the lighting was he'd like to see this on the large submission. Oh okay. Oh that's yes. what he meant. Sheet, okay. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. So okay. you said everything yeah. so, updated with right. that like full size. Yes. Like, you know, yeah. Oh okay. So what yeah. yeah. If and when we approve it, and that already signs it, everybody. Yeah, yeah I, I got that. That's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, okay. Codes and all that. Okay, understood. What book handle rules at a driveway entrance to a road this level? Because I looked at that photometric plan, and it's almost down to zero. Is that good or bad for a road like this? An entrance. So the entrance. What's your concern? It's just a general question. With the light. What signs? Okay. So the directions? Yeah, what yeah we have to check in that. I don't know. Most driveways don't have lighting like that. No, they don't. Much. Well, that's not why I'm over here. Yeah. Because you don't usually see lights like you could just see ones for that type of right. access. And I'm curious is it normal to leave it like this? Right. Like like you guys just discussed, it's not a town road or a county road. That's that's why we feel it's necessary to have the the backlit sign. That's that's kind of going to be the the beacon, the, you know, the directional. Yeah. Well, there will be business in the dark. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's it's that's a lot right. of nine to five. You know, it's, 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 yeah, no, you're right. The last yeah. you know four you know four o'clock five. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. 
So I think we've got that, one. and then the monument sign. We just need to see the yeah, what we talked about, okay. um, and that's what we kind of mean by merging all comments off of the one okay. plan and noted as a site plan. Okay. Um, we talked about the screening. Um, let's see. Okay, I think that's everything. Um, does the board have any other questions or comments? Okay. The um, perspective sign, the perspective drawings from the row. Oh, yeah, we're going to add that. Mike's got okay. that. Yeah, we did. I think one of our other questions is it appeared that the monument sign might be larger than the 16 square feet requirement outlined in the code. So just check we'll it out. We'll there check. was a couple measurements missing okay. on the drawings. We'll make sure that's on there. It, so. It's the sign. Sure it's it's not at the base, but it's the yeah, it's the whole rectangle of the sign. I think it's yeah. as we're back at the whole. The whole I can't remember the right base and the. Well, we have a code. We'll check the code. I disagree. The base. I know the base. Oh, the base and the sign. We'll check the code. The base and the sign. Yeah, the cash. Yeah, the cash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
When we looked at the plans originally, there's two parcels that are part of the golf course. The parcel you discussed, plus one that I think the south, mm -hmm. that has the bulk of the golf course on it. Yep. And that has a special use permit, is that correct? Yeah, so that's something else I was going to bring up tonight. I, I did talk with Lisa about this, about um, logistically when we do that, do we just lump, do we bring all the discussions in tonight and sort of put a bow on the whole thing? Um, that's the idea, is that we're going to have a special use permit that has to cover the whole dollars. Right. And my question early on was, <clears throat> this being a separate parcel, would it be handled separately or can we do it all as one? It's got to be all as one okay. because it's really, um, it, it, I think the lots probably should be merged, but I think we can do it on the two separate lots. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. They both have to be done. So, right. Is part of the driving range cross into the southern parcel, the landing area of the golf course? Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I don't think so. It's the other way around. I know, yeah. I know the golf, the golf You're referring to the driving range the driving associated range with the golf course. The new proposed building headed south. Is it cross into the southern tax parcel? The other way around. Yes, but just the other way around. So the existing driving range goes on to the northerly parcel. Okay. And with this application, what I'm going to answer hopefully in about 10 seconds is whether or not the new driving range associated with this building extends into the southerly property. Either way, it's a whole, either, yes. either way. Well, I, yeah, we just figured that out. So. Unitary event. The answer is no. So, this application's driving range does not, in fact, project into that other property. Having said that, <laughs> I would be comfortable if we could merge the two so we have one step. Yeah. Agreed. And I think that that's what that was the question, and I think we yeah. just answered it that that's going to be the way to go. So that, that one house that sits in, uh, I'm not sure where it's on the way. Yeah, is that rented? Is it, uh, what's going on in that one house that's on the southern part of this park? In that southwest corner? Yeah. It, it's a rental property. Okay. Who's, uh, Upstairs is rather than one of the guys who worked at the office. Okay. Yeah. So yes, that makes sense. So it's all. Yeah, it's all It's all part. I know we had said one thing as far as that future. That's on the plans. The future. Mini golf. Mini golf. Yeah. That we don't usually. We don't approve future. I understand that. I just figured since it was being discussed, it came out in the open when we were discussing the project, um, and they just haven't gotten anywhere with with that. It's just space reserved for that. And we would review what you're proposing, and then come back with come the back understood. Some point and yeah, say, that's fine. Hey, want to do yeah. Is your stormwater all designed for that too? Yeah. So is the wastewater. <clears throat> so there's no uh, public sewers out here. Right. So it's septic. I said you've got that raised field. Yes. And that has been submitted just for preliminary review with county. Uh, that's why it's a raised system. Yes and no. We're going to make it work. And I know you've been talking with Doug a little bit. A little bit. Doug Miller. And yeah. so you've got, you received his. I did. Comments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't think it was worth Getting into that too much, just yeah, just to make sure you got done. Yeah. So, have you pulled the wetland maps while we're talking about that stuff? We're outside of it. It is just outside? Yeah. Okay. I didn't look yep. myself. Yeah, I figured you did. Uh, from my perspective, from an initial presentation, it looks good. I mean, there's a lot of things that we have to go through to get to the end, mm -hmm. but I think it makes sense. 
Is there yeah. any similar facility in Central New York? The dual double layer, double level? There is nothing like that. Cleveland uh, is as close as you get. So is Tracer Tech like a chain? Tracer Tech is not a chain. We'll be using um, uh, track man tracking stuff. That's not essentially a chain, but it's used in different chains. Okay. So it's different than like top roll. It so is different than top I think we were like wondering if there if there's examples that you can show us mm -hmm. of what they look like. No, we don't. Uh, no, 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 Tracer, tracer technology driven driving range. So like to see with your PGA on Sunday, Sunday they have the track or when you watch follow it, they have the tracker. That's done by track and that, that's the office that we're going to use those track our golf balls. So when people are hitting golf balls, there'll be TV screens and they can either A play games, they can play virtual courses, they can have a driving range which will tell them how far their ball went, how much spin was on the ball. Um, we go to the PGA shows, and this is very high tech, mm -hmm. cutting edge for the golf industry. It's, it's designed to bring younger people into the game. For the first time in 2023, more people golf off course in facilities like this than they did on course. They so we're trying to do this as a driver, bring people to our golf course later on. You know, the younger people yeah, yeah. they grow up. You get them there. And then... You get them there. And it's for golf courses all over Central New York, but. So it's not just a driver, it's iron shots and yeah, yeah. heading down the putting. Yup, it'll be heated bays. You'll actually head out into the existing driving range from the backside and heated bays so you can go in winter time, uh, spring, summer, whenever. Okay. Um, How does that, it's open though. It'll be open, but we'll have heaters on top of it. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, uh, I had to ask the same yeah. questions, and yeah. it, basically, yeah. it's the heating elements <laughs> are sized and designed in accordance with the area yeah. where the people are going to be, so that it provides yeah. enough heat even when you have them open. If you're playing in yeah. a blizzard, yeah. exactly. yeah. the forced air does not affect the metal floor. Uh, no, well, it's radius, but no forced air. Radius is real big for behind. <laughs> I have no idea about how all that works. So thank you for bundling that into a little nutshell because I was on a rabbit hole. If I, just, you know, I, <laughs> um, I have a few questions. Sure. But I don't know how you want to handle it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this is mostly for you. I was starting with the um, the EAF, and um, we actually do have a comprehensive plan now, um, which is new-ish to everything. I didn't look at the plan to see if it how it fits with what you're proposing. Um but that that's C2 something you might want to um yeah actually I did um so just for the board to keep in mind um, as our initiative from the town board and the town is to be working with the comprehensive plan now that we have it. Um, and I know everybody got a copy of it and it, it's also on the website um, if, you, if you need a copy of it. And, um, but when we're looking, we've got the existing zoning of restricted agriculture, but the other thing to note is that there is the future land use projection for the town. And this is in the northern part of the town, north east through a up um, towards the border of the town. And that in future land use is listed as low. Um, so with an existing outdoor golf course, I could see low density residential fitting in, but this would be quite a change um, as far as structure, a large structure, more parking, um, banquet facility, restaurant, bar. So we should keep in mind and may need to look further and investigate that further with the comprehensive plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just so everybody's aware of that and we can keep that in mind. Go ahead, Aaron. Sorry. Um, that said, I'm not sure that this particular parcel would be suitable for residential design. Right. So, right. I just don't know how that plays out for I think residential development all around. Right. But, um, and that we keep an eye on that, but then it's a case by case basis. And, um, you know, I think that because there's an existing golf course, it's a 
it's not good for a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, not to be. It would be an ugly now, but it probably would be because but it's just not. Well, there's no septic. No, and that's why the killer does be and in, in, in the interest of the idea that there's not currently no public sewers or you yeah. know, water. And so um that's what it if you look if you look there, there, there is water. water. Yeah. Oh sorry, I mean public sewers, sorry. Yeah, um, actually golf courses have long been considered compatible with residential. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think so. Right. right. And I think the golf course, yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is this larger structure mm -hmm. and um the expansion of that. So. Well, and that was one of the things that I had that's actually later in the EAF that I'm I'm guessing that maybe some of the other board members picked up on as well, but the hours, midnight, every day of the week. Well, so uh, we'll just get into it. So one of the discussions that we were going to open up at some point is obviously that's going to be, and I even outlined it in my letter of intent, was to open that up for discussion. Um, what I didn't want to do, we have this happen in other municipalities with the commercial stuff where even with the, the breweries and the wineries and stuff where there's just going to be little tasting rooms, right? And we're seeing what's happening with that. At the town level, <clears throat> if you're limiting the hours with that, the idea was not to come back in time and time again with the business grows, but to open that discussion up now and say, here's what similar businesses like that, how they're operating. You have the bar and restaurant in there as well. <clears throat> um, if you get a later crowd in there, you know, uh, they come in late, is that is that feasible? So one of the things that we did discuss when we did the EAF and submit it was show the more expansive hours. Yeah. And then depending on where everybody falls with that, throttle that back. But It's just something I think should be closely looked at considering the residential nature, you know, yeah. right close by. And um, I don't really know um, example-wise what this type of facility you know, it's new, right? Yeah. So, normally, they're only open time Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they're open a little later. Yeah. Is there a proximate? I drove out there and I stood on the lot and I was aware of this midnight operation. I said, Well, I think it's midnight in January and the lights are on. I look around, I said, I did not see really much that would be affected by that. And I mentioned it sounds pretty invasive, but at the moment, I wasn't quite clear whose interest would be impacted by that. Uh, I didn't look at that part of it when I visited the site, but somewhere in here it said 350 feet was the nearest. Yeah, because we're yeah. considering the rental. The rental the nearest rental. Rental. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I don't have a good opinion. I just was well, throwing that. I, if you had south, there are houses. If you had south, there are more houses. And the, and the traffic would have been there. Nothing as far as no. yeah, I'm not saying I'm necessarily judging one way or another, but at least when I went out there and I yeah. looked, well, this is a pretty transforming kind of project out here. Who might it disturb? And I may not have seen everything, certainly, but right. my first reaction is hmm, not, it's not clear to me what other interest are engaged at the moment. But right. that's not a conclusion, that's just sort of an initial reaction. So that with the lighting, now that we're talking, mm -hmm. now that I know that it's the um the late the trace yeah. tech, does that mean that the mm -hmm. driving range is not lit because it, it's it is I, there's a lighting plan in the submission. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I see. Um, go ahead. Did you want? To... Oh no, I was just going to ask if, but we can do it after. I'm just curious to hear more about the banquet facility and the bar and restaurant, like the capacity, the size. I think the banquet facility, I think I'm using that a little too loosely. It's not a, it's more of like a birthday room. So if you have a, a youth birthday party that they want to host there, I'm, I'm more envisioning something like that, not a, not a banquet. Yeah. So it's not like a wedding reception. It wouldn't be a wedding type facility. It's more like corporate events and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not so much as uh, mm -hmm. on the initial design. We did have the private room. We turned that into the inside track, our golf course, the inside mini golf, the night yeah. mini golf. And we're using uh, the existing opening room, which is actually the, the bar, more or less, for, for the events. So they would be held in there. You know, well, how, how many we have? Like, you know, the yeah, capacity. Four, yeah, that's a that's broad a question. question. 
and we'll let it off. Okay. Good job, Colonel. We do have the golf course, but if this facility is last, we have golf leagues as well. We could the uh, um, virtual. Yeah, we have the existing Robert restaurant at the golf course. So they they will they go there. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a, a question with um, how all this stuff goes together, but so it's one of the questions, is it youth permitted or allowed by a special or conditional use permit? And it said no. So I was thinking there's something about the EAF, which is going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like an MD1C, it would be, it would be probably an expansion of an existing use. I think that's how we're going to do it. Um, e or F, rather, don't further about the emissions and stuff. I think we look at that um, on site sources of fuel and combustion, you know, generation, that kind of stuff, and then just doing construction and stuff as well. Um, and then and I was all the things, but um, with all the it's a bulk storage of fuel and all that. It, and then the next one is about um, pesticides and um, maintenance material. Is this going to be served by the existing facility? So, like, you're not going to are you going to have fuel tanks and all that stuff there? Or are you going to base all of your stuff out of your existing? Yeah, that'll all be based out of the existing well, the molders or stuff like that. Right, right. I saw that. And yeah. then, are you really not going to use any pesticide or herbicide on the grass? Um, I mean, I guess that might be. Well, it's our existing dragon ring house, so whatever he does now, we will do. That's something that um, I look at personally with um, how these things tend to run off and affect watersheds, especially right these supposed to be wetlands and stuff, um, and how these things are mitigated in the runoff. We're, we're not, we won't be adding or changing anything that we're doing to the existing driving area. We're, we're utilizing that same driving range. We're just beginning from the other end. Yeah, so there's additional, you know, disturbance and lawn creating and all that kind of stuff. And then that kind of has, leads me to the, um, the plans and then are you going to put back is it all the disturbed area going to be seated and mowed or are you going to put like work into some like meadow type plantings and and this kind of stuff that doesn't need to be mowed regularly it doesn't require a lot of maintenance it does a lot of you know it's it's a lot more beneficial to a lot of the environmental factors and you know with some of these details it's like well two to one we'll use riprap but i can't imagine that couldn't get away those, those are site plan D. I mean, we I know, but it's like thinking of the 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 look of it, the design of the whole thing. Is a, is everything just going to be mowed? Or are you going <clears> to <throat> what are you going to make it look like? Haven't given that really much in the grass mix. We really okay. haven't given much consideration to. Okay. <laughs> But the point is that, you know, because of our overall plan that we have now, we take environmental considerations a lot more closely. So if you do have some things, some options that we can reduce the amount of pesticides. That yeah, have. I mean, I don't mind having those discussions. I'm just saying as far as no, I'm saying this, this initial. During your presentation, this is great. I, mean, I, trust me, I, I love it. But the point is, if you make your presentation, you take that into account, and you suggest that we're doing some things to try to Oh, it could be helpful. Just, yeah, I mean, there's a lot out there, and it, it ends up saving time and trouble a few years down the road. Um, and, it, and it does a lot, and I think we even refer to that kind of stuff in the comprehensive plan. Um, with the trash and recycling, um, to talk to on here to disposal of solid waste, are you going to have all of that? Here at this facility because you got the kitchens and stuff. Yeah, there's on the site plan, there's a dumpster enclosure. Okay, area so shown. that would be and then um I think that was really it. And then as far as regular kind of questions go, um you know just little stuff that I think you're probably still working on. I appreciate that you came to us with such a 
well worked out plan. Um, it really makes it easy for us to, to picture a lot of the things we're proposing to do. And um, one of the, I mean, we talked about, um, you, you might have heard this with the other applicant, but foundation or architectural colors, lighting samples, even just color photograph catalog cut type stuff. We don't need the actual samples. We are proposing a, a sign out front. So we'll be sure to nail yeah, that like out. The whole yeah. package of stuff. Um, but also, yeah, the building itself and whatever. Yeah, and we've got, so I mean, preliminarily, the way we have it right now is we do, um, we have the floor plans, we have elevations that have been done. Um, there's still work to be done. I know, I think the color scheme just generally, and we can talk about this, obviously we'll be submitting some renderings. Um, but I think right now we're thinking gray with green trim, if I remember correctly. Uh, blue, blue and green. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's another thing you can look to the comprehensive plan too. There's, there's in the comprehensive plan, there's like least desirable, most desirable from what the whole community project um, resulted in. And so as far as even commercial buildings, like what's more, you know, most desirable is least desirable, just to have some idea of what the town is looking for. Well, and you probably got to see the color scheme. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you start a structure. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. The architectural yeah. 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 So our, with the foundation, we do usually like to see a sort of building wall section and stuff. What kind of foundation do you put out here because of the high water table? With such a big thing. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't do the foundation design. Okay. Um, but like an insulated, shallow, frost protected type thing, you can't, are you going to go down and it's not going to have a basement or anything no. like that? It would be, be a slab. I'm not sure if, they, if they're going to do a frost protection or do a turn down haunch. I don't know. Okay. I was just curious with the water, how that would work because it's not like you can do water and pump it, you know, um, without thing, other things being so. Fully thought out. I was one just kind of curious. Um, and then with the stormwater stuff, um, I haven't looked at the swip or anything. And I'm assuming that um, you know you're going to use this cascade contact product for um, your pretreatment and some treatment. of the pretreatment. Yeah. yeah. And then swales and stuff for the rest. <clears throat> and yep. are they going to engineer um, the um, anti float for this? I think they have. I'll have to double check. Okay. So one of the guys in my office did the storm design on that oh, okay. one. But the why we went with that contact was because the site is so flat, we couldn't get it to grade to get to your bio retention area. You know, your standard. There's only a couple that would not have dropped. Right. Yeah. But we also, I also, when I do them, I just kind of let contact do the design. So. Yeah, they do really good job. Their products are great. Um, I was just curious. Because we are also treating enhanced phosphorus. We do have to do that here. So there's an extra 25% water quality being captured here, too. It'd be a great opportunity to um, introduce and almost create a wetland treatment wise. I didn't look at the specifics of all that, nor did I look at the swift. Honestly, yeah, I have not. I like paper. Um, and I can get you a paper copy of this. Um, I don't know. I have one. I, I did print one hard copy. I gave it to Doug. I think Doug That's has good. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can figure that out on my end. But it Thank might you. be a really good opportunity to um, utilize more, some of the more unusual um, you know, treatment options for this kind of stuff that create an aesthetic benefit rather than just what's the smallest footprint all the ground we can do. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of positives that can you know, make it a benefit, and especially if you're looking at some outdoor recreation, you know, areas and stuff too. People are going to want to be the location. I don't know if people wanted to be outside and sitting and watching stuff, or if you've got the opportunity to do maybe down the road um, more than foot type things, or you wanted to have that kind of stuff. You know, think about other long term things and what you could set yourself up for. Um, with your site, if you're digging it up and disturbing it all, um, what can you do to make it pay back for you later? Sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta make it work. 
you know, I'm looking at you've got uh, I think eight and eight, sixteen days. Yes, sixteen on that. Thirty-two. No, sixteen on sixteen on thirty-two. Thirty-two days. There you go. So got thirty-two days. You got a bar that's over twenty feet long. The actual area, their kitchen is huge. Double check that one white man, one women's room, and the size of them is enough for the occupancy. Well, so the architect will determine that, and so will plumbing control for Onondaga yes. County. No, I just say, it just seems to me like uh, you got to make it just double or have that. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a problem? Sorry. Who did your initial study to come up with this idea? How did you manage to get such a big place? Is there you're taking on an enormous capital investment. Is there enough business out there to keep it going? I, I believe there is, yeah. There's, like I was saying, there's not another facility like this till, till you get to Cleveland. Um, so I think we're going to draw on some tourism. I think we're going to draw from, you know, different uh, things that come to town, like conventions and stuff like that. Um, as well as the locals who are really, I mean, in the wintertime, yeah, it's just, it's just we're going to be the only, unless you want to go do an indoor virtual or an indoor simulator, um, we are going to be the only option to be able to hit outside. Um, so how far is it, because I, I think it's a fantastic idea, yeah. how, how far is it to Syracuse, how far is it to turn down? I can see a lot of people. They're also so, building a hotel at uh, um, Point Place, in, which is mm -hmm. less than 10 miles away. Okay. Um, so I think it's a fabulous uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Quick couple of quick questions yeah. just to clarify. So, the club room on the plans is that the party room or whatever? No, the club room that is for selling golf clubs. That's going to be oh. for <laughs> driving the drivers and stuff like that. We left it so we could lock it during the night so there wasn't clubs. No, you, you're not. I misspoke. <laughs> I know where you're going with your comment. Oh, uh, the, no, I just the other that. room. The room is, yeah. Mm -hmm. there, I misspoke. There, there that came a, off. There isn't an event room. Oh, we're using the, the, early the bar period. area as our event space. Yeah. So the restaurant seating in the bar is correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna like you know roll off areas for okay, for guys. So oh, so like, I apologize. No, no, originally no, was the nine ask. hole indoor golf was we were we were gonna use that as a banquet room. Oh but after oh, okay. doing some studies and going to different places, we decided to add the indoor golf because it'll have another element for Syracuse, there's nothing to do in the wintertime. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it'll be something. It's like a It'll be mostly bar food, chicken tenders, no. uh, nachos, um, yeah. burgers, stuff like that, chicken wings. Yeah. And then the parking that we're seeing on the Google map here. Is that, is that, that I know that's the existing map. Obviously, <laughs> but um, is that going to be, are you going to do anything with the existing parking to? That's, that's a good question, and I forgot <laughs> completely about that. And we're going to bring that up now. I did talk to Doug about this, and he told me just to bring it up when I was in to see you guys. So item number three, Jamie, sorry, is the existing parking. <clears throat> that wooded area just to the north. Yeah. John is hoping to clear that out and expand that parking area. And I think, I don't remember what Forrest had on the survey for that to add. I, I forget how many parking stalls. I don't remember. It's gravel surface, um, similar to what exists out there now, but that was something else at one point John was talking about doing. So I'm not quite sure. That's going to be on, that is on that southerly that parcel. So, um, no. Yeah. Existing need. Correct. Existing need. Yeah. So you need more parking for your existing. Uh, yes. What about if you just actually strike it? Uh. Well, we we did we we paid half of it when we first when we first went in there. We did strike it. But we do our, we're very busy. You could easily fit, and I didn't do the math, you could do the math pretty quickly 
if you were to put some fresh stone down and strike that, because people are parking anywhere they want. You mean where the where the grass is? Your existing parking, you could make what, that what so saying, much more efficient. What she's know? saying is when you look at like that. It's yeah, not we, we uh, right, but I was out there the other day and it was like a free for all. And I think that in your unasked for opinion, you could save yourself a lot of trouble by fixing what you have. You don't need to make it bigger necessarily right away. I think you could get a lot in there. Um, it's, it's, it's very it's, 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 so it's more of an overflow. Um, Green dice is very busy. We, oh, we, we need more cars. So they park all the way up to the woods and all that now? Yeah, yeah, well, some of those trees are gone. I and mean, we, we removed some of those. Um, I, I'm looking at it. I was just saying, I'm looking at something that's very Yeah, we're confused. Yeah, so those, those trees aren't there. We were in those trees. Yeah, that's old. So the area must be old. Right. There's, there's, no, there's, I mean, there's like, there's a few up here at the top. You have that grass area. It's we had grass area now, and we want to we want to make that hard enough. Yeah, we do. Right. 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 Well, I, I think that when you look at it, um, I think you want to be mindful of this. Yeah, this one probably not not it's not going to be permitted to go all the way to the road. That there's going to be some sort of buffering or plantings or trees that would be required along the street frontage. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do that, Jamie, procedurally, yeah. how would, so obviously we're coming back in with this small yeah. the special use permit. Yeah, would that just, yeah, this is, yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is this yeah. just like, site plan approval for something well, it like that? Like we, it sounds like people are generally in favor on board to move forward. Mm -hmm. move forward. Um, and so, yeah, so we would need Besides the comments that Doug has sent and made, and we need um, the architectural renderings and mm -hmm. the elevations and the materials and, um, and the site plan. Yeah, I'm good with the marching orders as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about if we've got, so we've already decided that we're going to take what was previously perceived as two special use permits, we're going to just handle it all in one shot. No, no, I'm saying this oh. being the second oh, oh, one. Okay. And then updating the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it's going to be one. So, the is up next year, right? Yes. Yeah, so so the parking there. is potentially proposed for what we're talking about right now, to throw another wrench in the mix. Is this something where we would just add another plan to this plan set and address it all in one shot. So the next time we come in, mm -hmm. depict that proposal on it right? and just add it to this. It Got you'd it. need to do all your stormwater and all that stuff too. Mm -hmm. I understand. I'm just saying we're, you know, in other words, yeah, yeah. we're not going to do all project. this and then come back. What's that? Making it one big project. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if we're just going to do the one special use permit and cover everything, then it would makes you sense. Do it all at once, construction wise, or would you then stage it or phase it rather? You're talking about the parking lot for the golfers. Yeah, if you were to add, if you were to pave this out and do all your stormwater and lighting and all your all yeah, that, no paving. We we're going to do stone. Okay, but you still need the stormwater to yeah. cover. And then would you do this like phase one and then the other phase two? That kind of thing, or would you do all the construction at once? What? I'm sorry, I was yeah. Writing. I think we were going to do the parking lot first just because we're in need of that and we'd like to get that in use. Yeah, um, the other construction obviously will start, but that's going to take a while, you know. The it will affect your seeker, okay? Yeah, I know, but we have to update it anyway, so yeah. I don't really care. I don't know if it would necessarily be a phase one, phase two, but definitely we would do the parking lot first. So if we want to call it phase one. Does that change anything? No, I think we just need to. It, I think when we see everything, right, and then we start talking about when's it going to be built and, you know, talk about phasing as part of special use for conditions, we can do that. Yeah. I think, yeah, you guys can, it's going to take some time to get all this yeah, and together. Would, and then I think for something like when I, Think of traditional phasing. I'm more thinking housing tracks, 
big commercial developments. To me, this is from a stormwater perspective, one of the things DEC requires is a phasing plan. Um, but in this instance, I think that it's safe to just consider it one phase, just because it's all, it could really happen. At, well, no, but I mean, it, it can really happen all at once. You can have one crew over doing the parking lot, and it's going to take two, three days to do that. And then I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to make it easy on you, but I, that's all the easier for our code guys as well. So, yeah, so what, I prefer complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I would say. Take that back, compare that to it'll take some time, obviously, and you can how long how long do you think you guys need? We don't have to, but we can you can contact us too. We'll Next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, because I mean realistically, so what I was yeah, hoping to accomplish tonight procedurally day. is Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys meet every other week, don't you? Yeah. Okay, fine. In a month from now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking because you have, we still have to get through Seeker public hearing. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of going to count back and make the referral, the 239 referral. There's no DOT stuff. Um, I would like to, um, maybe the driver's going to be happy to send a referral. I'd like to have your. This is going to be important. It's an yeah. important part of it, the, the, the parking parts. I can add that. I mean, realistically, I'm not sounding like this. By the end of the week, I can have that added and updated. Mm -hmm. So to be able to make that referral. To make the referral out. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I think that's got it. That's due. I think Friday, right? I think Friday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so now I have a deadline. I'll just get it done. So then we'll have that. Do that part of the next. Yep. And then that way we can get the public hearing open and closed and get that out of the way in the seeker. Yes, yeah, so I'm really sure we see all of this. <laughs> yeah, so, I know, yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but I hear you. Yeah. You did a lot of the other ahead of time mm -hmm. stuff, like the aqua and all that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, we had some stuff, like the aqua and all that. Like, yeah. that's all done. Yeah, I think Doug just mentioned that DOT for the driveway cut may. Is it, it may county? require. It's town. Town. Hmm. So, 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 yeah, it's going to over So, yeah. 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 Is there, I already looked into that. Is there an entrance? There's not an entrance. entrance. We're going to, there is going to be a new entrance required where this is. Mm -hmm. um, I know where it's for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up, up by the building. There's a parking lot. Yep. There's there. Well, we'll, we, get, we'll get the county comments back then. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and lighting. Yeah, so I did. There is a lighting plan in that oh, package right, right. Uh, yeah. inside yeah. and out. Or, uh, sorry, I didn't know why I said it. Yeah, so I really think comments too. So, um, yeah. okay. So, start working with them. Start working with the sign folks. Yeah. We'll have to get someone hired and okay. make sure that we get that right. Yeah, I think the um, sign and building. I know Rod is real. Sign? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> He's gonna propose a light out at the road. Did you get the netting is one of the things that I think we're that is a comment? Yeah, he sent comment. me, yep. Yeah, so there's John, a tall safety netting, like yeah. how that gets installed. Do you use like poles? Yeah, we, use, yeah, we don't know about that. Balls. They go 10 feet to the ground. Um, I sent him a little something on there. I don't know. I didn't want to bring it in because yeah, I just didn't yeah. want to show it tonight with a bunch of new stuff. It's possible. I know you said there's nothing else like this uh, out to Cleveland. Yeah. There's even some just internet images that you can share with us just okay. to show what. Yeah, I have an like idea. Yeah. Yeah. You can email yeah. that to Lisa. And I saw one in Denver. I went through and like, oh, oh yeah, they are they're, they're really <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And then they, like, we were just in Waco, Texas, and they have a smaller one there that's almost similar to, to what we're building that does an actual top off facility. But so they are doing different sizes now. You were talking about the, you know, the size and the ratio. Mm -hmm. um, the top off had 99 days for the big cities. We're doing 32, which is about a third. For, yeah. you know, How high was the meshing? Our meshing is only going to be 50 foot tall because. We're we're into a field. We don't really have anything that we need to protect. Yeah. Um, we're we're trying to keep the ball in. Oh, basically, there is, there is yeah. netting proposed outside of the. I can't believe I'm having to say this, but the second floor outside there is safety netting to catch. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people don't follow. Really. People try and happy Gilmore one. They only follow. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, no, we lost. <laughs> and then you, and this is just because I don't know a lot about it, but um, you drive around with one of those things that go involved. Correct, yes. Okay, you one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have our golf course. I don't know where it's from now, but we didn't have the two task map numbers. Because we're yeah, I admittedly got that wrong on the first one. Anyway, so I'll just leave it there and add another one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it adds um, the EAF and stuff, so that way yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. To, uh, <clears throat> correct. Yep. Okay. Anything else from the board? Um, being a new member, our our engineer remarked that this way required. The country's permits, we've done this work. There are these three documents that maybe they've been submitted and just don't have a certification that the information is true and accurate, the affidavit, and the execution of a payment agreement. Do those things have they happen? Do they build a problem? What, what do you mean? Uh, the the off the special permit section 1.527. Okay. Let's make sure we're the, arranging the record, we have everything so we're not. Backing up or missing something. It's this stuff, and Lisa takes care of it. Right. The application, we should, yeah. should have that. Okay. Right. There, just show you a second. Okay. I'm just trying to. Yeah. I, I actually don't know. It's not like a patient here. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not this. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Um, okay. Anybody else? All right. So if I get it, plan updated. Enough by Friday adding the parking for the last piece of the puzzle. We can make the county referral at least get that done right. Yeah. Okay. And the rest of it we're just what's that? Yeah, we that for. By four yeah. on Friday. Yeah, I'm not working past noon on Friday. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only work past four thirty. That's why I said four. Submission <laughs> deadline for our next meeting, like for the next next meeting. So yeah. next month would be the twenty eighth, I think, of March. And I think and Rod then, has the architectural drawings in really good shape. Like, I mean, yeah. he's progressed them a lot since. Yep, and I just spoke with him. He said he. It's March 28th. Yeah. Two days so. after. Oh, yes. Yeah. So March 28th, just to keep in mind, that would be the next realistic deadline. Okay. Yeah. Not this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. All the. Oh, oh, we can't wait to see your time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get someone else to come to the meeting for me. For that. Sessions um, so that we can hear more about upcoming legislation and provide comments. So they're listed on the agenda, and I think everybody got um, the email from Lisa. So there's the town board workshop on March 27th um, at 5 o'clock p.m. for the discussion for the accessory selling unit legislation um, to talk about upcoming legislation. And then there's one on April 10th. 2024 at 5 p.m. Um, that's on the legal analysis. Um, so the details are um, there, but they are inviting all of us to come. So those will be public meetings. I'm also hoping to have paperwork regarding those to yes. you guys before the Yes, yeah, so you'll have yeah. the information. <laughs> um, okay, does anybody have any questions on those? What is it? I've never done it before. I've never done it before. It's new. I mean, oh, yeah, right. said, yeah, the town board with code and 
Um, we just show up the board talks about what they're like the AUD, ADUs, for example, they'll talk about it. And if anybody has any comments, questions, they can answer it. Mm -hmm. It's just, just like a profession, like we did. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, I mean, if you remember, this came before us probably six months ago. Mm -hmm. Where somebody wanted to build some cabins yeah. yes. on their property, right mm -hmm. and yes. it was not allowed by code. So they're trying to so they're trying look to get at amending in. our code to allow that person yeah. Yeah. to build yeah. some cabins. Wait, yeah. so they're going to change the code for what one person wants to do? Not necessarily. I don't think. Uh, well, I think that's the question. It was like it was. It was, it was that's kind of what's okay. yeah. heard at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's been before, but. So that's the opportunity to say if you do X, then this is what's going to happen and why, right? So that's that's all. So we then we will get it eventually as it's going to review you as a board, but this is gives us an opportunity and opens the communication ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for those that have, um, you know, that I noticed in the town, what is the town magazine? You get all the top topics. Yes. 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 <laughs> There's some stuff if you have your like me and have some past issues. Um, and I can share them with new new members who we haven't had on the past on, but there is some stuff like on accessory drawing units in there as well. So maybe um, take a look at that. Um, okay, and then the other thing was the planning, the Ontario County planning symposium is this Wednesday, March 13th. And I know I think everybody has signed up. Um, so we will see there and because um, everybody gets um, like a certificate at the end with signed off on it, just turn it in so I can put your training hours in okay. when you're all done. All right. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? No. Don't park in the wrong garage. Yeah, there's a specific oh, yeah, garage. Yeah, right there's not this explicit direction. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. I will. I make the motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Rich, second by Arnie. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Okay.